given the weather that we've had, I think it's been a day of just slowly ambling around the northern Sabi sands looking for any signs of food. So they've been in amongst these thickets, they've been in the open grassy areas, and they've been slowly but surely just feeding their way northwards. Eventually, I think they're going to get towards Gauri Dam, and they'll probably have a drink there. But the need to drink and the, and the desire for water will be far less today than it would have been on a very very hot day that would have driven them to water much quicker today they can just slowly amble along they're not losing huge amounts of moisture they're also not dehydrating from the sun beating down on them and so it can be a much slower process as they get to water and they'll probably eventually get there this evening i'd imagine at the rate that they're feeding now it will probably take them about three four hours just to get towards gari dam but they are heading slowly in that direction and pointing that way at the moment so I don't know if it's the exact same herd though, difficult to say, the, the views that we've got of them are just big grey bums in amongst the grey dead trees at the moment, so I suppose they're not dead trees, the, the wintry trees should we say, because all of those will be have green leaves fairly shortly and then those elephants would be almost not visible if it was the summer months. But it looks like the same sort of composition of, of the herd, it's, I can't see nicely, but it does look like a similar composition. Of course. We do get multiple different herds of elephants through here and once one herd comes generally we find a situation where multiple different groupings come in and we end up with an almost influx of elephants into the area and some days we'll be out here and there'll be literally a herd around every single corner and like I say sometimes it happens just as one herd comes through then the rest start arriving as well and we end up with a little bit of an elephant invasion and let's hope that's on the cards for the next little bit because elephants really are such a wonderful creature and to spend time around them particularly here in the Sabi Sands where they're relaxed they are approachable they come really quite close and they they're not very nervous of us they are a wonderful animal to spend time with and and the interactions that they have not only with us but with each other and with the herd and the way that they sort of feed and the way that they interact with their young and and drinking and playing in mud all of those things are just the most wonderful sort of animal to watch and, and to spend time with and like I say I find elephants very interactive I find elephants like to know what's going on they're curious they come towards you they investigate they're looking around they in interact with their environment and that they use trees and roots and grasses and soil and mud and water and everything that is a component of their area they will utilize and mess around with and on top of it they also have a little bit of a cheeky side to them and they'll chase birds and all kinds of other things so I really do love spending time with them and it's the perfect way to start our afternoon. Palin, you're asking if elephants destroy many trees. Now I'm going to ask Senzo just to zoom out a little bit for me and I want to show you just how many trees the elephants have destroyed in this area alone. So as we come out, just look at the number of trees. That tree on the left with the nest that is in it, so the one at the back there, well there's one right there that's been pushed over by an elephant and destroyed. Then the one that was standing and sort of silhouetted with those big black balls or nests on it, the one to the right of that, and if Senzo just pans all the way to the right, you'll just see multiple different dead trees. All those tall trees have been destroyed by elephants and what's happened with those is most of them have been ring barked and the one in front of us is probably the easiest one to show you why I say they've been ring barked. If we go close in on that tree's trunk, you'll see that there is bark there and then there is no bark and so what's happened is the elephants have fed around that and they're looking for a red layer called the cambium layer now the cambium layer is the transport system from the roots of this tree up to the leaves of this tree and it allows this tree to survive once they strip the bark all the way around this tree it then unfortunately cuts that and the tree that starts to die and to rot it also exposes it to all kinds of wood boring insects and various other things and this tree then dies and so all of those dead trees as Senzo was panning across is all because of elephants ring barking them and stripping the bark for food and there you can see a lot of fallen over dead trees that have been pushed and a lot of that would have been done last year during the drought at the end of the day they didn't have any grass to feed off last year so they had to go after trees and they pushed a lot of the trees down and utilized those so yes they can be very damaging but in the same breath with elephants what you will find is that they're exposing food to other animals so when they push a tree down like this acacia that Senzo's just shown you that will be food for another animal that maybe couldn't have reached that so something like a, a nyala or a kudu or an impala that maybe couldn't reach those leaves it's now reachable for them it's also going to create a habitat for like we were saying wood boring insects scorpions um, we'll find genets um, 
lilac breasted rollers, owls, all kinds of things will nest in those big dead trees. So even though they are destroying a tree, they're still creating an environment for other species to thrive. And so sometimes people look at destruction and they say elephants are bad animals and they're making a lot of mess and we are overpopulated and they're destroying the environment. But in the actual side of things is we have only been watching for such a short period of time and monitoring for such a short period of time, we don't know the full extent of how elephants work and what their role is within the environment. The other side of it is we have kind of closed off the way that they move and, and they that means that they increase pressure in a certain area but who knows maybe this is how elephants work is that they will flatten a certain section and then they move into another area and that section then repopulates with trees and it just re-stimulates the environment we don't know that just yet because our history with them is just too short from studying them but yes they do have a big impact on our big trees out here particularly the species of tree that i showed you the, all those dead big trees are called knob thorns and so all of them have been really hammered and in fact the Kruger National Park at the moment tracts of land where there's knob thawed forests and trying to push all the elephants out there then they fence it off and they allow those young knob thorns to grow and to get big because they reckon that the bigger knob thorns are far less likely to be attacked than the smaller ones and so they're trying to section off and then as that section comes right they then move it to the next section and they just kind of rotate it and they keep elephants out of certain areas to keep the knob thorn forests alive and well so it's an interesting thing I mean also at the end of the day a lot of destruction on these big knob thorns and various other trees during the drought last year was blamed on elephants and it actually wasn't a lot of it was also to do with termites so we find that the termites last year because there was no grass they actually started stripping the bark off trees and there was a serious amount of damage done to trees by termites last year as well so not